Hello and welcome back to the channel that not only relates you to the ocean, but the ocean back to you. Today, we are talking about the x-axis or the horizontal aspect of the ocean, specifically the coast. A coast or coastline is where land meets the ocean. The middle ground between the two, in general, is marked by sizes of individual rock rates, from the large boulders to the tiny clay particles. You can conclude by erosion processes that the smaller the particles, the older the coats are, and vice versa. There are a lot of codes variations we can go over, but we will focus on three of the clearest ones. Boulders, sand, and silt clay mix. Let's start with the boulders. These usually occur around more recent land formations, where there's rock cliffs and the waves crash too fine for comfort not your typical beach. Examples of them in the US are around Hawaii, Alaska, and the Western states. Next is sand. This is the type of beach you think of at your summer vacation. These get the most attention because of that. Interesting fact, Sand can be deposited in one of three ways, by land to rivers, erosion from ocean waves, or parrot peach poop. Parrot peach poop because the diet of some parrot peach is coral. Because of that, there are a variety of colors depending on the surrounding areas. These are examples in the U.S. Florida has three colors, white sand, mainly from quartz, gray sand from fossilized rock and shark's teeth, orange sand from coquina shell fragments. Hawaii has green sand from olivine found in Papakolea Beach. Red sand from the abundance in iron at Kaihalulu Beach. Lastly, we travel up to Alaska where their sands are black from the basalt. A question you might be asking now is what are the dimensions of any beach? It varies as for the width or how wide. You run into a term called the coastline paradox. It means that as you zoom out, you measure less because of less detail. But once you zoom back in, you see more detail. You must account for them and measure more. As for how far it goes out into the ocean, it can change depending on the bathymetry, tides, or biotic interactions. The one to understand its tides, or as referred to in this context, as tidal range. When searching into tidal range, you would find a host of acronyms, one of which is MLLW, or Mean Lowest Low Water. And that is the average value taken of two spring tides of the day. This is about the same measurement height as the MLWH or mean low water springs. Just in case you see either one and can't find the other. There are three levels of tidal range. Micro Metro and macro. Micro is under 6 feet, and that's along the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, Hawaii, and northern Alaska. 
measure is between 6 feet and 13 feet and is located both on the east coast and the west coast. Macro is above 13 feet and is found on the southern coast of Alaska. In spite of all of those things, the coats are more than their abiotic, non-living characteristics. It's really also categorized by their biotic living properties, such as what ecosystem does the area hold, and most of our interactions with it, like swimming, fishing, construction, etc. Since that's the case, the extent of the coast or beach can be extended as far out as the end of the continental shelf as seen here. Beyond that point, that's what we like to call the open ocean or the pelagic zone. I know that this is a lot already since it's starting to combine different scientific disciplines. We haven't even got into the different ecosystems yet. For that, you have to stay tuned.